The one-of-a-kind taste of Dr. Pepper and college football go way back. As long as people have been tailgating, they've been doing it with Dr. Pepper. Watching college football without a delicious Dr. Pepper is like watching the game at home without throwing a party, or even worse, throwing a party on game day without a Dr. Pepper. If college football's the quarterback, Dr. Pepper's its favorite wide receiver. That's right, the same Dr. Pepper you can pick up at Dollar General, take home, and watch your football team with. Dr. Pepper and college football, it's a -a one-of-a-kind tradition. It's a football Sunday doubleheader. First in Green Bay, the Packers face the Lions. Got it! Touchdown! Then at MetLife Stadium, the Giants host the undefeated Patriots. Coverage begins Sunday at noon Eastern on ESPN Radio. Opinion must hear radio. This is the Paul Feinbaum Show. And now, Paul Feinbaum. We welcome you back to the second hour. Reggie Raglan from Alabama will join us shortly. Uh, more guests, including Bill Hancock, Marcus Spears in the house, uh, grabbing calls from across the country on this Veterans Day. We uh, started off with the Navy coach, and uh, let's get back to the calls here. And Jack is in Kentucky. Uh, hey, Jack, thank you, and good hey, afternoon. Oh, how's it going, Paul? Doing great. Uh, second time caller, I called you last year, but I got two questions. And I'm going to uh, give a shout out to Marcus over there. How you doing, Marcus? How you doing, Jack? Doing well, uh, man. I'm going to get Paul to ask you if you want to go sp- uh, snipe hunting with me over in Eastern Kentucky. <laughs> Ooh, wee! Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, here's my question. I'll hang up and listen to your comments, okay? The first one is, why did LSU drop so low in the polls? And the second question to you, Paul, is what do you think about the ba- uh, basketball cats this year, UK? No, uh, I, I feel really good about the cats. I think there's less pressure. I, I, I was with Cal a couple weeks ago and uh, Tyler Eulis, and uh, I, I really like their chances with no pressure as opposed to all the pressure. And as far as why LSU dropped, they they picked a bad time to lose. Yeah. they. I mean, it, look. They lost to Mississippi State, second game. They'd already be back. Already be back. The, the problem with... The timing, like you said, Paul, of LSU's loss is that everybody's getting into the thick of things in their season. And that undefeated record, or if you play a team that's ranked highly and you beat them, you see, you see Alabama jump to two and you see LSU fall to nine. Now you look, you look at that and say LSU could beat some of those teams like every other fan base or every other team looks at their squad and says they should be ranked higher than this. But I think it's just the timing. And, you know, as of right now, the good thing about it now, as of right now, as the season sits, just like with the fans that are mad about Paul, what you said about Iowa, just like the fans are talking about Alabama and Clemson and Notre Dame and Baylor, it's still a lot to be found out. So it, this will change some more, and we'll have a new argument next week, and everybody will be mad about where their team is and where they aren't. But it, it's it's all good. LSU dropped the nine because of the way they lost too. Also, Alabama dominated the game, and and that comes into play. And then when you talk about other teams and the success that they're having, and some teams even being undefeated, they probably found on the slot where they could put them. Yeah, I think you're right. If that had been a uh, 12 to 10 game last season, oh, yeah, it would uh, be top seven. Well, she might be even higher. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's a it's a rough time there. Now, having said that, a couple of years ago, Alabama lost to Texas A&M. They 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 went from one to three, but that game went down to the final play, and yeah. I think that LSU was hurt by the impressions. It, it, it has of that game. it has something to do with how you compete in these games. Yeah. I mean, look, you you have a justifiable argument that Florida shouldn't have dropped it to 11 because they won the game and they they still sitting in the same position that they were sitting in the week prior. But obviously the committee is taking into account how you perform. And I think LSU being beat 30 to 16 had a lot to do with how how much they dropped and other teams not having blemishes on their record. Fred is in Corpus Christi, Texas. You are next up. Some good fishing down there, Fred. 
My bad. Oh, yes, sir. You go down Redfish all, all the time. How you doing? I'm good, bro. Good. Listen, I'm going uh, to be brief. Uh, Paul, I just have a question to see if uh, you agree with me on this, if you guys agree. The college football playoff, at first last year, it was, it was, it was something new. It just seemed like now, instead of the, the eye test, the strength of schedule, just to me, it seems, in my opinion, it seems like that they're trying to more or less put the teams out there that's going to have a large fan base. Well, fan. Fred, here's the problem with, with, with what you said. I, I think I think you have a small sample versus a large sample, and I think uh, there are people in this room who are are very adamant about what they believe, and as opposed to having three different units, ECS was you had two two human polls and a and a a compilation computer. of computer polls. You have twelve, thirteen people sitting in a room. That's not a lot of people, and let's say you have Barry Alvarez in there who, who's bullheaded, and you know, he said, you know I, I believe in this, and some, and, and there are people in that room who probably say, you know what, uh, I'm going to vote my the way I vote, and uh, we'll, we'll make up for it at the end. What I don't like is it, it's inconsistent, and yeah, I don't want to come off as the the uh, the angry guy at the end of the bar that doesn't like it every week, but but I don't. Uh, and I think okay. your point is a good one. I mean, you put Notre Dame, uh, you put Notre Dame in the top four. You put Alabama. Those are they're all those are all thorough, thoroughbreds. They stick Iowa in there at five just to give themselves that's some cover. That's what I was going to say. I mean, yeah. I don't mind about the Big Ten. I mean, that's that's five. It's just it's a Iowa is a laughable choice at number five, but, but you can get away with it because you know. Listen, no one in America doesn't believe Iowa is going to get beaten either against Minnesota. Uh, at Nebraska or against probably Ohio State. Okay, here and let me ask you this, Paul. With that said, with Iowa, if if, if ESPN and, and 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 the other news media for sports do not upplay Iowa, who's going to watch the Big Ten championship? How much money are they going to generate? Well, uh, the, I mean, the, Iowa listen, really last year uh, it was a fifty-nine to nothing game, and it, a lot of people okay. still watched it. And by the way, the Big Ten Championship is on Fox. It's not on ESPN. The college football playoff show every Tuesday night is on ESPN. And I've been on that show the last two weeks. And what's it all about? It's about people who love college football watching it. No uh, question. And that's that's the whole point of the show. No question. Tammy is up next. Tammy, good afternoon. Good afternoon. How Marcus, Marcus, I totally disagree with you. Mm -hmm. Totally disagree. This About is the what? first time I've ever disagreed with you. I do not believe that LSU should have fallen and then all the excuses that you gave for the reason that they fell. I still think, even though LSU is where they're at, LSU should have never fallen that far. One, they lost to the number four team. Two, anybody that you can, anybody that's got any common football sense, out there. I don't know who's on this committee and I don't care who's on this committee because to start with, undoubtedly they didn't watch and don't watch every game. Yeah they do, and Tammy. The most Tammy, they watch every game and I, I, I'll, no I'll make it simple for you. LSU picked the worst pick the worst time to play poorly. It was the biggest audience of the year in college football. It was the now, biggest game of the year in college football. And they looked in up. Tammy, therefore, they were penalized by this committee. Now, I don't care what that committee says. LSU and anybody in that lane talk, oh, me and slapped out of the dang all the top 25, and yet they kept a little dinky uh, seven and ten at the bottom, and you going to tell me they not told me? Let me tell y'all something. Why, about by the way, Tammy, why are you so upset about, about LSU? Why do you really care? Because Other than the I'm fact they lost to Alabama. I am an SEC fan, Paul Five. I make you on the SEC network. Do you uh, not work on the SEC check. network? Well, let me tell you something. I'm an SEC fan, and I don't care who LSU lost to. LSU was still a darn good team. Okay. Yeah, they let Mountain blow it. He did, because he's coaching. He blowed it. He dang sure did. He, he should have had a better plan, just like that dude right before me. Hey, Tammy, uh, listen, why don't, you, why don't you slow down on the on the fake outrage, okay? 
Oh, this ain't no fake outrage, Paul Pablo. You done made me mad. I was pretty calm when I came in here. She you was. done made me mad because you want to talk. Let me tell you something, Paul. You are on the SEC network. Tammy, uh, uh, let, me, let me say, I'm not sure of many network. things in my life, but I do know what network I'm on. Thank you very much, ma'am. Committee. You hear me? I don't care how many people's on there. Hey, that Tammy, slow down, okay? Slow down. Slow and down. And Paul. Hush, okay? the big ten. They have <laughs> got the <laughs> thanks one. Listen to me, Paul. You listen to me. I'm your caller. You start listening to me for a minute, and then you can respond. I've been listening to you for ten years, Tammy. Yeah, well, I've been listening to you, too. That's why I keep calling in all the time. Tammy. What Tammy. What, Tammy. Tammy, don't let Paul do it to you. He, just, he knows. Just, he just, knows that I can't stand just when he keep, talk against the SEC or any other team other than Alabama. You know he ain't going to talk against Alabama. I know. I know. He'll serve Alabama in a minute. Why? Because he likes beating over for him. That's why. Paul <laughs> Fireball is a fan. That's all he's ever going to be. He don't want to talk about nobody else. He don't want to give nobody else no credit. And when they lose, he wants to put them down. Why? Because he's a fan. That's why. He's a fan and moron. That's what he is. A fan. And he knows it. He knows what he is. He ain't nobody got to tell him. Hey, Tammy. I'm, I'm, I'm with Tammy. You got to do your job. Tammy. Listen, you got to do your job better. By the way, Tammy, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to argue with you anymore, okay? That committee is not what it needs to be. I don't care who's out there. By the way, you Tammy. Put the, Tammy. Oh, let me tell you why the SEC is doing what they're doing. Because the SEC teams are getting better. They're not getting worse. Tammy, I hate, I hate to do this, but we need to run here because we have to talk to Reggie Raglan, the middle linebacker from Alabama. Let me tell you something. You take Reggie Raglan and stick him up your butt, okay? No, I love That's what she can do with Raglan. And Auburn's going to finish him. He ain't going to know what he is. Okay? He'll see you in two weeks at Jordan Hare Stadium, Tammy. We'll see you. I'll see you there because I'll be there. One damn eagle. Okay. Make me so damn mad I could be sick of that. I didn't try to upset her that time, Marcus. <laughs> you did. You hey, listen. I tried. You didn't. That was the lightest I've ever seen you. I was not. You even to said, it. "I don't want to argue with I you." I really anymore. don't. I didn't care. You didn't care. No, no husband questions. No honor questions. I just sat Nothing. there and took the beat down. Anyway, we will take a break. Speaking of beatdowns, our next guest <laughs> knows how to administer one. Uh, he uh, was part of uh, a major one Saturday night in Brian Denny Stadium. Reggie Raglan. Why the hell, Eagle? <laughs> Mom, I can't. Welcome you back. And uh, before we get to our next guest, Reggie Raglan, in honor of Veterans Day, we want to go back a year when Reggie Raglan took time out of his schedule to visit veterans in Tuscaloosa. I like the Veterans Hospital because my people that was back in World War II and like Vietnam War, like you don't you don't get to hear just regular stories from them. You, you, you get to hear the type of things that they went to on a daily basis. What they did to keep our country safe, um, I respect that a lot. Just the same tour, even though I, I could barely sing, it's just to put a smile on their face and help them get through their days just for 10 to 15 minutes that, that we take out our busy schedules to make them laugh. It goes a long way. And we welcome in Reggie Ragland from Tusco. So Reggie, uh, thank you so much for the time. Before we get to, before we move forward to talking about last weekend, uh, the upcoming game at Starfall, what did that mean to you to spend time with those uh, men and women who gave their life and put their lives on the line for this country? Uh, um, it means it means a great it's, it's a great deal to me just to get to experience and just to be around them and just feel the oil on the oil and just um. Just getting to meet them and just talk about some things that you don't get to talk about on a, on a daily basis, and just and, it, and it's a it's a very cool experience just to talk to some of them and see what they went through, and and it humbled me a lot just to be there with them. 
Well, you're speaking of going through a great deal. Uh, Alabama survived. I don't know if survive would be the best word, but uh, certainly uh, enjoyed uh, the fruits of beating LSU, and now it's on to Starkville. Uh, where is, is your head and the heads of your teammates as you get ready for Mississippi State Saturday? Uh, our head is on Mississippi State right now. Um, LSU is in the past. We're not worried about the past right now. It's all about getting better this week and just because uh, we know we got a great opponent in Mississippi State. So we are, it's, uh, it's a lot of stuff they do on the offense and defensive side. So we got a lot of preparation to do. So um, my head is on Mississippi State and trying to get better this week. Reg, I know you're looking forward to this matchup, and, and you can't help but talk about Dak when you talk about Mississippi State. What kind of challenges do we present for you in particular as a middle linebacker and trying to figure out what he's trying to hurt you with uh, defensively? Um, it's it's hard to tell at times because he um at times he can come out of the pocket and run the ball on you and he also can throw the ball so it's my job to make sure the guys up front get lined up and the, and, the, and the DBs in the back are doing their job and uh if 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 the guys up front have the right pass rushing lanes he'll he'll run through the lanes and just get ten twenty yards on you um by by him rushing and if you if you let him sit in the pocket too long he can throw the ball on you and the guys can go up and get it for him so it's gonna be up to us up front to get pressure on him so we can give our guys in the back. Uh, time to cover. And I know, you know, you just alluded to you don't want to dwell in the past, but I have to know, what what was the mentality after the Ole Miss game? Did you guys feel like you let one get away? And what did that do for you guys going forward? Because it looks like this team has a bit more of an edge now than you had in the previous games against Ole Miss. Uh, guys know that um, I even though we got an early loss and old Miss guys knew that we still come out and keep doing the things that we needed to do, we we can put ourselves right back in the position where we need to be, and and which we are. So guys, um, just like we still got to keep getting better. We're not worried about the rankings or none of that stuff. We just got to keep getting better as a whole, and if we keep doing that, we'll be where we want to be at the end of the year. Reggie, I ask this uh, carefully because Marcus Spears uh, is, is almost like Leonard Fournette's uncle. They're, they're, they are so close. So, but uh, without making Marcus feel too badly, uh, the mentality of you and your teammates in stopping Fournette Saturday night. Oh, um, guys wanted to get to him because all the for the whole two weeks leading up to it, um, during our bye week and then the week leading to the game, that's all we heard about was Leonard Fournette and the guys up front. They like that. So uh, they was like, we're going we to come out and try to apply the pressure to them, and which they did. Um, if you go back and watch film, you can tell guys were reestablishing the line of scrimmage. Um, Jerry, Reed, Ashawn, um, Big Dan Payne, all them guys were, were striking blockers and reestablishing the line up front. And because their guys are known for making uh, establishing another line um, for running lanes for him. So my guys were doing a great job of doing that, and they freed up the guys uh, to make tackles on them. What is what has made you guys other than the physicality? Everybody knows it in season on display when you play. What has made you guys so effective up front, particularly getting to the quarterback this year? Something that you you did okay last year, but now you're blowing it off the charts as far as pressuring and getting sacks. What has changed in that front seven to create those type of opportunities for y'all? Oh uh, man, guys are um. I wanted to get to the ball. Guys are not heavy up front like we were last year. Guys are lighter, and guys are making it like a competition. Like, okay, I'm gonna try to get, I'm gonna try to get two or three sacks this game, and and plus, and we got guys like Tim Williams that's coming off the edge, and he's getting sacked almost every game. And seeing seeing guys get sacked like that, it, it make guys want to get to the quarterback and keep and keep and keep the guy in, in the pocket so guys can collapse on him. So uh, guys are just making it fun out there this year too, and guys wanting to play and guys wanting to do this stuff. So. Anytime you get sacks like that, it make it easy on your DBs where they don't have to cover all day. Reggie, well, we've talked to you several times this year, and I can't ever get you to say anything other than you have a game coming up, and that's all you're focused in on. But what was the reaction, if you could tell us, uh, to the new college football playoff ranking that has Alabama number two in the country? Our guys were like, oh, that's, uh, that's good for us that we're number two, but we still got a lot of work to get done, and which we do is still a lot of football left. We still got a good team, Mississippi State. And uh, we still got Auburn left at the um, end of the year. Going against them is always it's always a tough game, no matter um, what type of records we have. So uh, we always uh, we still got to come out and just keep being Alabama, and we still got to keep playing ball and keep getting better. Reggie, I played for Coach Saban at LSU, and I know you guys hear time and time again the process, the process, the process. 
Have you guys been able to lock in week in, week out, and just focus on one game? And what has your leadership entailed this year to make sure guys keep that mentality and not get complacent going forward? Um, guys, um, the locker room, like, okay, we, we got to keep doing this. And, and myself, um, I go around talking to guys, see where they headed. Uh, they were like, yo, Rich, I know we won, but it, uh, we still got to keep getting better. Guys want, want to keep getting better because guys want to keep playing the play at the next level, hopefully. And, and guys are um, always in tune with each other off the field and on the field. And so if something goes wrong in practice, guys, make sure we get it done. Sometimes the coaches don't even have to ask to start over play. Sometimes we start it over on the field. So guys guys want to keep getting better on the field and, and, guys, and guys are not worried about the outside stuff. We just worry about us. And as, as, I'm, as I'm in focus, just keep getting better this year. Reggie, I talked to people in Tuscaloosa recently, and this was before the LSU game, and they said they were really more concerned about the state game because everyone knew they would be fired up for LSU home game. This is a big game, uh, but it's always, but it's also the week after that mega game, and your team has not always played well the week after a big win. Uh, what are you trying to guard against as you uh, get ready to, to move forward to Starkville? Um. People don't talk about. We can't worry about the people on the outside saying we got to keep getting better on the inside. And guys already been talking like we got to keep getting better. We can't worry about the outside, and we, uh, we got to worry about Mississippi State because last week was last week, and like we really ain't talked about LSU this whole time since uh, since this week started. We just been focused on Mississippi State, and got and guys and we had a great practice yesterday on Tuesday, and, and you just tell guys we want to keep getting better on the field because guys are hustling, running to the ball, special teams starting to look good. And uh, anytime you special teams look good, you got a chance. You got a chance to win at a ball game. So, guys are are ready, and we prime, and we ready for this. Reg, my last question. I know we uh, talked a lot about this defense, and everybody in the country is. Tell me a little bit about how Jay Coker has established himself as a leader on the offense, and also uh, got you guys to believe in in him, and knowing that he could do the job to get you guys where you eventually want to go. Oh man. Jake has been playing great. Um, Jake hasn't been doing no talking like I'm going to do this or that. Jake has been showing by the way he's been playing, and uh, he's been, he been doing a great job of getting the guys lined up. He's been uh, doing a heck of a job of throwing the ball, and, and, and when he needs to and he needs to make play, he, he uses his feet, and he's ran a couple guys over and see how tough he is and what type of guy he is. That make guys excited, and, and, and we love watching him play on offense. So. He's been doing his job. He's not, he's not worried about what people got to say about him. Yeah, he comes in, he comes in early, get treatment, stuff like that, watch film, and he leaves late. And that's the type of guy that, that we need at quarterback, and that's, that's the type of guy we got. Reggie Raglan, uh, nice enough to join us from Tuscaloosa. Reggie, thanks. It's always great to catch up, and we hope to, to do it again soon. Oh, yeah, me too. Thank you. All right, Thanks. Thank you. You got Reggie Raglan, uh, nice enough to join us, uh, the middle linebacker. In Alabama. We'll take a short break. More phone calls, more guests as we continue on this Wednesday. Did you ever look? Crazy. By the way, guys are over in Starkville. The game's too short in the afternoon, so you can ring them. You can ring them all night Saturday night. They're not going to help. Cowbells ever bother you? I love Stingray. First of all, <laughs> let me just get that out there. Stingray. Ah, I'm sorry. All right, Pete, we got to show it. Anyway, we're, we're uh, back. Uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> Happy Veterans Day to all of you just joining us. We had the Navy coach on earlier. We uh, are now going to take phone calls in a moment, 855-242-7285. You saw Reggie a minute ago. We're in now the segment called Locker Room Talk. Dan Mullen, first up, in the locker room. Obviously a tough matchup. Um, Playing Alabama, I'm probably the, uh, you know, uh, they don't give me a vote. I, I, they're the best team in America. They got... Five star players across the board. They got probably got. I'm, I'm sure they got more five star players sitting the bench that can't get a rep on their team. Four and five star guys that won't even get a rep in the game or uh, any of that stuff. And 
I'm sure most teams, I'm, I can guarantee you more than probably we have on our whole roster. I have only one thing to say about that. My official cowbell here. Uh, anyway, uh, what did you hear from Dan Mullen since I was walking across the room getting my cowbell? I love Coach Mullen, but cry me a river, right? They have five-star recruits that won't play, all of this, all of that. You probably have the best quarterback in the conference. Let's just focus on us. I don't like Dan Mullen eluding to what Alabama has, even though I love him. Dan Mullen, crying Marcus a river. Hugh Freeze, one of my favorite guys, is up next. Well, never uh, quite experienced uh, an ending like uh, like we experienced Saturday. It certainly, uh, after watching the film, is uh, man the the effort that was given uh, by both both teams and ours couldn't couldn't find uh, issues with effort. It was a very difficult ending. You think you've won it a couple times? Obviously, a play a, a game is never uh, just decided on, uh, on on those plays, but they are a part of it. <sighs> what did you hear there? It's nothing we could do. Yeah. You know what though? It, you know, for Coach Freeze to have to stand up there and try to give some type of synopsis of what happened. Look, it, it took a. It, it was divine intervention. You've been in games like that on the winning side and the on losing side. On the winning side. side and the losing side. So, I mean, not ever like that, though, Paul. Like a play like that. Listen, yeah. man, that's. I sh they whoever called that play, right? Brett, Danny knows they should have played the lottery that night. Yeah, no question. That was just. Okay, we've had we've had two uh, thumbs down so far. Let's Coach uh, Freeze is basically. I have no answer for what happened. Yeah. The third, third loss of the year with LSU still to come and Mississippi State. This season could get away from him if he's not careful. Gus Malzahn's season has already gotten away from him, but now he's got it back. Playing a very talented uh, team in all three phases uh, this Saturday defensively. Top 15 in the country. Um, they defended us probably better than anybody did all last year. Uh, I think they held us to seven points and uh, statistically speaking did a good job against us also. Offensively, they're the number two rushing team in our conference. They run the football. That's what they do. That's going to be a big key to the game, us stopping the run. Uh, we are very glad to be playing at home. Uh, against these guys. He's talking about Georgia? <laughs> are, you, okay, are we sure we had the right tape there? <sighs> Look, a win is a win is a win. And Gus Malzahn needs them. He does. This is a big... Uh, he went, He beats Georgia. And it, he, they, they are the comeback kids. No question. No question. They, they have... They have figured out a way to put themselves in position to salvage the season. Yeah. Obviously, he wants his team to know that this is a good football team. Don't pay attention to the way George is. <laughs> Don't listen orders. to Marcus Spears. And Don't listen time. to me and you and anybody else out there that's saying George is not good. He wants his team to kind of continue on this path that they've started. So I like that yeah, son sure. big enough Georgia to make sure his players understand that we need this one. He did with a straight face, too. Jim McElwain is in the, is in the locker room next. You know, we've got a very good opponent that we're going to play. Um, guys are playing hard. You know, they're playing to go to a bowl game. Um, they got a chance to play the SEC East champs. It's a heck of a lot of motivation there. This will be a great learning experience for us and uh, our guys who, let's face it, are in uncharted waters. They're, they haven't ever been here. By the way, Gators are in Columbia last year in this game. Florida lost. Will Muschamp lost his job the next day. I love the way Jim McElwain has coached his team all year, and I love that piece of interview that he put forward. He wants to know if his guys can handle success. Yeah. And I love the fact that he put the onus on Florida, saying we're going to see how we respond. And, and also... Reminding these guys that the team that's coming in, they have a chance to beat the SEC East champs. Mm -hmm. 
So it, it, it's a lot of things that he – it was a lot of hidden code in that interview, and I loved it because that's coaches talk to his players. In other words, this. If, if you saw the Vanderbilt game, you would be worried too. You would be worried, exactly. Brett Bielema has had a big week in the media. You know, uh, as coaches, we'll do that a little bit. I'm just looking forward to hopping on the wife, uh, hopping on the plane, <laughs> hopping on the plane with my wife. Can't believe I just said that. I looked right up at you. I said, hopping on the plane um, with my wife, flying back to Fayetteville. I'm out. We're out. Peace. We had uh, Brett on earlier this week, and he actually made the situation worse, if that's possible. But uh, one of the moments of the year. Keep it real, B. Yeah. I love it. Keep it real, Coach B. You're married, man. It ain't, it, it ain't against the law. You ain't sending. Handle your business, man. I like it. Any words, Peter? Hey, well, I'm hopping off this segment right now. <laughs> you didn't know. You didn't know I was gonna go there with you. I didn't know you were gonna preach. That's real talk, man. Now he didn't mean to say it, but ain't nothing wrong with it. That's his wife, man. But he was going to hop on the plane. I don't think that's what he meant. He meant hop on the plane and then later. Here's a guy that just went for a two-point conversion and scored. Yep. He was going to hop on anything he could find. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. Much more to, to come on this program. <laughs> Long time ago, where did you come? Welcome back. Uh, Marcus Spears with us. A few more minutes on a uh, Wednesday, Veterans Day. A big uh, guest lineup with Reggie Braglin. We have the Navy coach on. We'll talk to Bill Hancock later on. Let's uh, talk to Stuart next in Texas. Uh, hey, Stuart. How you doing, Paul? I want to talk to both y'all. Y'all touched on, based on earlier, about uh, Jim McElwain, but I want to go ahead and ask anyways. What do y'all think about Jim McElwain coming into this, this Florida team this year and just taking over and how well he's done this year. Go ahead, Paul. Well, I mean, I think he's done an extraordinary job. Uh, no one expected it, I mean, other than a couple of fans who call in now and predicted it, which I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, but you know, he 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 had a low expectations. He made the most of the situation. I think he still needs to finish the job, though. No because question. you don't want to lose this weekend, lose to Florida State, lose to the SEC West, and, and just and and just have the season right completely Absolutely. implode. I, I like I like what Jim McElwain has done with managing expectations more than anything, Stuart. Now, it's surprising um, to a lot of people, quite frankly, ourselves in, in television and also abroad, even Florida fans. He, although most of them won't admit that they didn't foresee the season going like this. But the great thing about college football is that you have these type of stories year in, year out. I think what Jim McElwain has done for the University of Florida has gotten them back to what made them successful, and that's being able to have a prolific offense. They'll always have good defenses because they can go in their backyard and recruit guys and, and have success defensively. But Jim McElwain instilled a it's us against the world Let's go out and play and see who we are every single Saturday. And I think those guys on Florida's team, has they've responded to that very well. And we're not talking about a team with guys that's not very good. I can look to that defense and show you and name four or five guys that will probably go first or second round in the NFL draft. So we're not talking about a bad team. And then the, the emergence of Callaway offensively, the way Kelvin Taylor has been running the football f for them this year, Will Grill was balling out, obviously had his situation. Treon has came in. I think the offense lacks a little bit with Treon, just to be honest for, uh, to you from what we saw with Will Greer. But what I think Jim McElwain has done, he's took the onus off of this offensive line, having to be able to protect the quarterback for extended periods of time. He's realized that I have dynamic athletes on the outside who can make plays. Let me figure out a way to keep my quarterbacks out of trouble, get the ball into the guy's hands that can make plays, and we'll see what happens from there and play really good defense. 
I think he's been great for Florida. I think he's going to be in the running for Coach of the Year in, in college football this year. No doubt. Let's uh, talk to Jacob next in Virginia. Hey, Jacob. Hey, what's going on, Paul? All good. Hey, first I'd like to wish everybody a happy uh, Veterans Day, especially to my dad. He has 23 years in the Navy. Just uh, really proud of him and all the other veterans because sometimes their job goes unnoticed. Absolutely. And getting back to football, though, um, this is the first time this last weekend that as an Auburn fan I've been impressed with our team as a whole. And I feel like Gus Malzahn has done a good job not letting the season get completely away from him. He is as bad as the season has been up to this point. Um, I like our chances going into the Georgia game this weekend, just the way we ran the ball. How much do you think that was based off of how bad Texas a and run defense is, though? has a lot to do with it. <laughs> A&M has been susceptible to that all year, Jacob. And look, Auburn's success as a football team, like we can get – you know, a lot of people get enamored with the kick six. A lot of people get enamored with the play against Georgia where they won the game at the end. A lot of people talk about the moments at Auburn. What people don't realize is that Auburn identity has been being able to run the football. With all of the bells and whistles, with all of the things that they did with Nick Marshall and Cam Newton, their ability to beat people has come from being able to run the football. And that's really what we've been lacking this year. Exactly. That's, that's, been, competitive. that's been the big missing piece. And defensively, obviously, obviously, there are some things to be desired. But the fact that you the fact that you first start the season off, you Jeremy throwing all of these interceptions, putting defenses in a bad situation, and then you lose your best defensive player from from most of the first half of the season in Carl Lawson. It's just a lot of things that happened bad. Now, some of that had to do with the way the guys were performing. But you know Auburn has athletes. They had to figure out a way to get back to what makes them good, and that's trying to establish the run. And give give those guys, give Sean White or Jerry Johnson or whoever's playing quarterback an opportunity to be two-dimensional on offense, and that's how they become effective. Offensively, regardless of what anybody wants to think, that it's just been luck. And then defensively, Auburn struggled on defense last year. They had a really good defense when they made it to the national championship and won it. But at the end of the day, this Auburn football team is built on running the football and stopping people from doing it. And most of the time, they are able to compete when they are in that position. My next, the only last question I really have is uh, if Auburn does beat Georgia and finds a way to do this, is Mark Rick in a bad position as far as his job goes at Georgia? I think Mark Rick is in a tough spot already. Um, I know. But like, with as bad as Auburn's been, do you think that this will make it a lot tougher? Yeah, for Jacob, uh, there's no question it yeah. will. I mean, yeah. Yeah, Mark Rick went from the biggest story uh, in the SEC last week to a non story this week. That's because of a win, but. Auburn Georgia is a huge rivalry, and uh, I think he would be back, right back to where he was a week ago. Uh, I, I don't think all of those stories we heard last week have evaporated because of a win over a Kentucky team that's going the wrong way. Thank you very much for the call. Bulldog is next up in Panama City. Uh, good afternoon. Hey, Paul. Glad you're taking my call. Happy Veterans Day. To Thank you so about. much. Yeah, I'm a veteran. My father's a veteran. My brother was a veteran. My granddaddy was a veteran. My father-in-law, he fought in both theaters in World War II, too. He's T.C. Sheik, LaGrange, Georgia. You but like anyway, it all? Marcus, I, I enjoyed your piece there, talking about how you get choked up, you know, watching the veterans. Yeah, man. Yeah, it, it does me, too. But y'all's mother station, ABC World News, done a segment last week. And I can't recall if any of the college teams do it, but the NFL and the NBA and the and Major League Baseball, they bill the defense department to put on them ceremonies. And I mean, they get big dollars. Mm. Your, mm. your crew can pull it up. I think it was ABC News. I seen. Yeah, I've heard that before. Yeah, and and that's a disgrace. Wow. The veterans know that. I mean, you know, they wow. they make. The owners make all that big dollar, and then they going to charge the defense. I mean, well, the defense department, you know, to, to put it on the air there. Bulldog, there. Li listen, this brings up a great point, and I know we probably going to go a different direction, P-Town, but we know to do this every once in a while. I just have a theory, okay? Just tell me if I'm wrong. I have a theory. 
where I think things should be. I think when you go serve this country, when you come back, or when you finish your tour, that you should be one of the most well taken care of citizens in this country. The fact that you should have free health care, there should be a place for you to stay, there should be a, a nice place for you to stay, and there should be advantages that you have that us as normal citizens don't have the opportunity to have. Because you put your life on the line. It makes sense to me. I don't, listen, and I know when you get to the political part of it, you talk about budgets and how much money would this cost. Listen, for as much, for as many things as we do, there is enough to make sure that these men and women are taken care of when they get back from serving this country. No argument here. Let's take a short break. Geico presents Strange Saving Stories. Astronomers detected an interstellar transmission. It stated, Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. The implications were staggering. Was the cosmos telling us we could all save hundreds on car insurance with Geico? Or did their radar merely pick up a signal from the nearby Rufus and Clyde's morning show? We may never know. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And now, for Geico's edition of Stuff Found in Your Car, we go inside your side door pocket. Hello, yes, the crumpled receipt with gum in it. From your anniversary dinner, you sprang for expensive wine, your server was Beth. That dinner was a couple hundred dollars. Money you could get back if you switched to Geico and saved hundreds of dollars on your car insurance. I bet you'd save that receipt. Frame it, even. But really, where did I go wrong? Was it the corkage fee? Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit Geico.com today. It's very stressful having debt. The Regents Next Step Project is helping real customers like Ashley confidently take their next step in life. Insights by Regents definitely helped me see how we can save and pay off our debt at the same time and why we would want to do that. Financial confidence to move forward. I am so ready to take our next step. Watch Real Next Step stories and plan your own at Regents.com slash Ashley. Regents, official bank of the SEC, member FDIC. Paid appearance by an actual Regents customer telling her real story. It's a football Sunday doubleheader. First in Green Bay, the Packers face the Lions. Got it! Touchdown! Then at MetLife Stadium, the Giants host the undefeated Patriots. Coverage begins Sunday at noon Eastern on ESPN Radio.